Good afternoon. I'm Mayor Jim Lenup, and I want to welcome you once again to uh, one of our podcasts. Uh, because this information changes pretty often, I just want to repeat or mention that it's Thursday, April 2nd, 2020, and it's about 2 p.m. or a little after when we're, uh, uh, as, we're, as we're recording this. I want to repeat something that we've talked about before, but it just bears mentioning once again, and that is to stay at home. You know, we've heard from the governor, and I've heard from every healthcare professional I know that uh, we need to stay at home. It's surprising to me, but it, well, it is and it isn't, that uh, we get a number of phone calls uh, here at the mayor's office by people who are wanting to know if, does that mean me? You know, does that include me or my little group? I mean, there's only six of us or there's eight of us. And what I try to tell them all is the virus doesn't care whether there's six of you or eight of you or 14 or 10. You know, the number is, the point is to stay at home and don't associate with one another. Uh, you know, you talk, you know, communicate, uh, wave to your neighbors if you go for a walk, but, but don't get within six feet. Uh, we've had some reports you know, about our playgrounds and uh, parks. And what I've tried to explain, there's a little nuance there, the parks are open, the playgrounds are closed. And if you go around to our parks, you'll see that the playgrounds are surrounded by caution tape. Again, you know, we've had a couple anecdotes uh, come to us about parents who have taken the tape down so their kids can play on the playground, the swings and the slides and whatnot. And frankly, it's just not safe. I mean, you just shouldn't be doing that for your kids. Uh, we've had other reports of uh, uh, people getting out to play basketball and soccer. You know, I don't play much basketball these days, but there was a time when I did. I played a lot of pickup basketball. And I know that you cannot guard somebody from six feet away, okay? So you're, if you're going to be in some kind of competitive game, you're going to get up close to someone so that you can guard them. And so we can't have that. That's an example of how we're going to spread this virus uh, through the air. And so you'll notice if you go visit our parks now that the basketball goals are gone. The backboards are still there, but we've taken the goals down. And if you go to the soccer fields, you'll notice that the nets are gone. And the whole idea is to try to emphasize a little bit further this whole notion of physical distancing. Uh, but we, again, we want you to get outside, uh, get some exercise, enjoy the fresh air. Spring is sprung, so to speak, and we want you to enjoy that, but, uh, but do it from a safe distance. A little bit later on, uh, Dr. Nabalski will talk about uh, safe shopping and safe retailing. And those are things that we want people to begin to understand that when you go to shop, you know, there's a, not only it's distance wise, but uh, the way that you handle the merchandise, the way that you, uh, you know, investigate what you want to buy and, and so forth. Retailers need to take it heart to heart as well in terms of trying to enforce some of the things that we'll talk about uh, with respect to distancing and how they protect their employees. Just keep in mind that this virus is spread through the air. It not we talk about touching, but it's really um, most often, as I understand, it's spread through the air. And so that's part of what we're trying to do with respect to getting the distancing that we talk about, keeping people from sharing the same air. I've mentioned before the governor's stay at home order. Uh, it, it continues through April 7th. Uh, there's a number that you can call if you have a question about whether you or your business is included in this, and that's 877 820 0890. I've had a couple of people ask me about the um, travel restrictions that have been put in place in Decatur and Jennings counties. You know, our folks here have taken a look at that from time to time. But as I think I've mentioned before, these uh, travel restrictions and the stay at home orders, they got a lot of exceptions to them. And so what we want to try to understand before we would do anything like that here, is just exactly how we would enforce this, how we would try to make it, uh, make it uh, a reality. So, you know, we're, we're going to follow that, uh, what happens over there a little bit more closely before we make a decision about here. Uh, remind people in terms of where to go for information, city's homepage, City of Columbus, Indiana, not Ohio or Mississippi or one of those other places. Um, don't forget uh, the CRH has a, a line that you can call uh, to, uh, to talk directly to a healthcare professional, 812-379-4449. Uh, and the city has on its homepage links to other partners. One of those partners you'll hear from a little bit later, uh, Cindy Fry at the Chamber of Commerce. You know, we've been asked from time to time to provide a little bit of assistance to a small business. So we're going to partner with the chamber so as uh, not to duplicate efforts that they've got, but to try to bring you the best information that we've got. Uh, once again, want to thank people. Uh, we continue to receive, uh, you know, some gifts, some donations of uh, personal protective equipment, and we're very appreciative of those. Want to repeat that there are some rumors out there, or at least, uh, you know, some rumors with respect to enforcement that we've, you know, not begun yet. And I want you to be cautious of fraud. You know, we've had some indications that uh, out in the Parkside area in particular, there were people going door to door, 
uh, trying to sell test uh, testing kits and you know that's just not uh, just not uh, there, there there is no legitimate kit to be sold on a door to door basis um, finally just thank you you know for your compliance with the governor's directive and your assistance in all this stay well stay home be safe thank you all right, good afternoon. I'm Dr. Brian Nibolsky. I'm the County Health Officer. Uh, from the public health point of view, we continue to stress the need to follow guidelines regarding social distancing. For this reason, I'm encouraging everyone to stay at home as much as possible and remain isolated from others, except for your essential needs. This is the primary way that we can all work together and prevent the spread of COVID-19 in our community. A little bit of sacrifice now is going to pay major dividends in the long run. The more we distance ourselves from others, the sooner we can get back to a sense of normalcy. We're still witnessing people in close proximity at groceries and big box stores. I'd like to encourage shoppers to do their part. This would include sending only one family member to the store at a time. Space yourself out from other shoppers. Limit your trips to the store to once every two weeks if possible. Do not shop if you're not feeling well or symptomatic in any way. Wash your hands thoroughly before and after your trip to the store. Use wipes to wipe down your shopping cart both before and after your shopping trip. Don't touch items that you don't intend to buy. Use curbside pickup for groceries if possible. Use a payment app or debit card to avoid using cash. Keep your non-perishable items outside for three days and wipe them down or rinse them off before you're putting them away. We're also encouraging the elderly population and others at increased risk to avoid stores altogether. Ask someone else to handle your grocery list for you. Lastly, you can wear disposable gloves and consider wearing a mask if you have one and avoid touching your face. We are also providing guidelines for stores on making the consumer's trip as safe as possible. So we have seen a gradual increase in reported cases locally, and this is a scenario that we've expected. Please continue to be aware that there are more people infected in our community than are showing up in the recorded numbers that you will see in the paper or online. Low risk individuals have been asked to continue to isolate themselves and assume that they have COVID-19 since we are limited on testing at the current time. As more tests start to become available, those positive cases are going to continue to rise. Unfortunately, the timing of this peak is unknown locally and nationally. This is even more reason that we should try to remain isolated from those outside of our own households so we can reduce the odds of transmission of the virus. Now recently, the Surgeon General labeled Indianapolis along with several other major metropolitan areas as emerging hotspots for COVID-19. A, a larger city obviously has a denser population. With more people living near one another, the odds of personal interaction and transmission of the virus increase. Unfortunately, we are seeing a rapid rise in cases in Marion County, as well as its adjoining counties. We need to realize that we are only about 30 miles from the Indianapolis area, so we need to be doing our part here in Columbus. Our primary, primary goal remains to flatten the curve. Instead of a rapid, large, short-lived peak in which our healthcare system may become overwhelmed, we are shooting for a longer and flatter curve, which is more spread out. I do want to take the time to acknowledge all in the community, especially small businesses who have already been making a major sacrifice to help prevent the spread of COVID-19 locally. I understand how this must be exacting a financial, emotional, and mental toll on many of you. We're working to get all businesses open as soon as we feel it is safe to do so. Unfortunately, we cannot give an exact date at this time. The sooner everyone buys into the concept of social distancing, the sooner we can get back to business. So stay home and stay safe, Columbus. Good afternoon. 
I'm Jim Bickle, President and CEO of Columbus Regional Health. Thank you for taking a few minutes this afternoon to hear an update from our community as well as Columbus Regional Health on the ever-evolving coronavirus. I wanna cover a couple of topics today. Uh, certainly uh, in the context of the rising number of positive COVID patients that we're seeing in our community as well as within Columbus Regional Health. Unfortunately, this week, Columbus Regional Health had our first patient succumb to the implications of the COVID-19 virus. While this patient was not a resident of Bartholomew County, our heartfelt thoughts and prayers go out to the family and loved ones of this patient. But I think having this hit home amidst the number of statistics that we see right being shared across the news media uh, in this country brings it home to our own community this virus and this situation is real everybody should be concerned with the actions we're taking as a community as well as individuals we've had an increasing uh, number of COVID positive patients that are certainly in our community, that reside in our community. But as you all know, we serve more than just Bartholomew County and the number of positive cases continues to rise in our region. And given that rise in the increases, uh, I, I did want to talk about uh, the issue around identifying the individuals that are testing positive. It's human nature. Everybody wants to know who has tested positive, not only for their own personal well-being, but for those of others. We understand that. But I do want to talk about our obligation to our patients is to maintain their privacy, as well as our employees. And we take that sacred trust very seriously. So what should we do as a community? First and foremost, everyone needs to own their own behavior. I often ask people, how would you behave if you assumed everybody you came in contact with had tested positive? Would you behave like you are now or would you behave somewhat differently? Only you can answer that question. If you have it, follow the instructions of your physician or other healthcare professional. If you're not hospitalized, stay home. If you don't have it or don't think you have it, you need to follow our physical distancing guidelines. If you have the virus, it's certainly your own personal decision whether or not you want to share that with others. Only you can make that decision. This is why it takes all of us working together. I want you to know that Columbus Regional Health works closely with our county health department, who by the way has to follow the same privacy laws that Columbus Regional Health does. As an employer, we follow the CDC, the Indiana State Department of Health, and other human resource guidelines. But please know we go to great lengths to notify those fellow employees that may have come in contact with a positive tested employee. Ultimately, it is up to the employee or the patient to reveal whether or not they've tested positive. Again, everyone needs to own their own behavior and actions. I like to say, do what you believe is right. I want to now talk about local testing capabilities. We realize that given the number of pending tests that are still uh, awaiting return to Columbus Regional Health, it can be frustrating to you and it's frustrating to us. You know, it's frustrating to CRH because our caregivers, our physicians, need to be able to provide the appropriate direction and care plans to patients that test positive. And the sooner we get the test results back, the quicker we're able to do that. 
It also allows our caregivers to safely interact with positive patients. What should individuals do uh, while waiting test results? If you know that you're uh, symptomatic or potentially have the COVID virus, follow the instructions of your healthcare provider, certainly stay at home, protect yourself and others. You need to know why you should, how long you should stay quarantined. We know that's frustrating when you're waiting on test results. And certainly you wanna be able to take the actions you need to keep your loved ones safe. So what is Columbus Regional Health doing around local testing capabilities? Currently, we are using three laboratories. We are using the Indiana State Department of Health Laboratory, a national private lab by the name of LabCorp. And we've recently this week engaged a, a, a second national lab, uh, Ibsum, to help us with uh, testing supplies and quicker turnaround. We're also in exploring uh, a new testing uh, uh, procedure and a test kit with Abbott Laboratories. You may have heard on the national news that Abbott recently announced that they have uh, the capabilities and they're going to start distributing these lab test kits across the country. CRH's own laboratory has the capability to run these tests if we're able to get the test kits. We're awaiting confirmation from Abbott Labs and the state of Indiana of when those test kits will be available for us here locally. I wish I had a firm date, but as we know, Abbott has prioritized these to hotspots across the country and we will be uh, receiving an allocation sometime in the future, a date yet to be determined. In closing, I wanna thank our physicians, our nurses, our techs, our aides, our housekeepers, our EMTs, paramedics, and other first responders, and other healthcare professionals that are on the front lines each and every day, putting the health and safety of our community, our patients and individuals ahead of their own. They're our true heroes in this situation. Thank you so much.